One of the founders of Ontario Hydro, which ultimately became uh, OPG, was Sir Adam Beck. Uh, so this is someone who was very involved politically in the province of Ontario and had a vision of being able to build out the hydroelectric system in the province as the province started to grow, so 100 years ago. And Sir Adam Beck started down the path of deciding that, no, there's a better way to do this, that we could build out a bulk electricity system uh, with big hydro stations at the time and develop that for the province of Ontario. Our vision for the company is to electrify life in one generation, and we wanted to give a time frame for people to have a perspective. Really what we're setting out to do is to electrify everything and therefore result in a clean economy uh, where we live. OPG is committed to being a net zero company by 2040. This was laid out in our first ever climate change plan, uh, which we launched in 2020. Commitment is to help the broader economy also become net zero by 2050. These are ambitious goals, uh, but we are confident that, uh, that they can be achieved. And we're looking to do it through a variety of solutions and technologies. Leading the way would be uh, new nuclear technology in the nature of small modular reactor. It would be low carbon hydrogen, uh, battery storage, and then the redevelopment of existing nuclear facilities and the continued operation of our hydro facilities. The Darlington refurbishment project is one of our key successes. We have been planning this project for many years and the meticulous planning of every task and the qualified and experienced workers that we have on the project are what makes this project successful. During a refurbishment, the plant is shut down, isolated, disassembled, and put back together with new parts. In the nuclear reactors, the pressure tubes and the fuel bundles have a lifespan of 40 years. Once refurbishment is done, the plant can run safely and reliably for another 30 to 40 years. OPG is very excited to be planning the world's first small modular reactor here at the Darlington site. Small modular reactors are, like the name, smaller components, more simple components, faster to build at a lower capital cost. I think on the, on the SMR side, so just to put it in perspective, our, our target date is to have it operational late 28, early 29. And it really comes around working with the technology provider and our own nuclear capability. But really what the goal is by the time we get to the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth reactor is the important part is that middle letter, which is the M, modular. So that these can be made in a factory, shipped to the site, and then assembled on site will be just an easier path for nuclear to be developed in a cost-effective way and uh, something then that the, uh, I think the rest of the world can follow. So this is the Madawaska River. Upstream of us on the river system are two stations. It's a uh, Barrett Chute and Mountain Chute. Uh, downstream of us are another two stations, which are uh, uh, Stewartville and Empire. Uh, the total uh, capacity uh, on this river system with the five stations combined is about 620 megawatts. Calabogie with the new station will contribute about 10 megawatts to that river system. Prior to that, the old generating station produced five megawatts through uh, redesigning and creating a more efficient station and uh, the ability to convey more water, we're able to generate more power, nearly twice as much. Right, so this is uh, the South Branch Spillway. Uh, right now we're doing an active spill. Spill is how we are able to manage and control the uh, water levels on the lake. Every hydro station has a spillway next to it. Uh, that water has to flow. It either goes through the station or it goes through a spillway. So when it goes through the station, we're generating. And when it goes through the spillway, we're managing the water levels and, and al allowing that water to convey down to the downstream stations. Again, a station like Calabogie is doing it with 
uh, Indigenous First Nations peoples in the process, helping us do it the right way so we can improve on the way hydro stations were built 100 years ago uh, to the way they are now built so that the entire part of the environment is better off, both the electrification, but as well every fish, bird, piece of land that, that might be impacted by, uh, by these projects is done respectful of the, of the groups that are sort of the uh, guardians of our, of our environment. Ani Bojau, Miskagijago Indigenous Cause, Sagamuk Anishinaabek and Donjaba. I'm Christine John, and I just introduced myself in Ojibwe with my spirit name, which means Red Sky. And I'm from Sagamuk Anishinaabek First Nation. When the company is uh, embarking on a new project, before the project even starts, we engage with community. We share our, our plans, our ideas, and we start that engagement early so we can get perspective from the Indigenous nations and communities. We can get their perspectives and uh, feedback, input, and participation. In that way, we're starting meaningful engagement. I get asked a lot again, uh, sort of, do do we think we can accomplish our goals of, uh, you know, achieving what we want to do in the next generation? And I'm a pure optimist. I think if you get smart people that are motivated, uh, where you free up the innovative spirit of people, everything can be accomplished, and we will accomplish this as well. Like I say, we will do something very unique at OPG, and I think that will allow others to follow it and do the same, which we're going to do, and it's gonna be all 10,000 employees. It's not gonna be me, it's gonna be everybody. <laughs>